my name is Diego Polier. Uh, I'm originally from Uruguay, South America. I moved to the U.S. in 2004, uh, so I have been here for 15 years now. Before, I was in chargeurs in Uruguay for 19 years. I was offered uh, the job here to be the manager in the U.S. operation, and I moved myself, my family, wife and four daughters. So we are all American citizens now. Um, I'm proud to be here. Well, most of the people that work here are from this area. A lot of people are part of this community. This meal has been very important for the whole community. And we have been here since 1955. Lots of people, relatives have been in the community have been working here for some time. They have whole families working here in the mill. But I think this, this has been a great location. We are in a site in the Francis Marion Forest, National Forest. We have uh, 550 acres of land. Nowadays, through these mills, we process almost one half of the U.S. production of wool. We are pretty much buying like 8 million pounds of greasy wool, processing uh, five days a week, 24 hours. Chargers today is the, the only combi mill in the United States. Manufacturing as a whole has been moving to the low labor cost countries. So, and Texas is one of the ones that have moved the most. So I would say that cost would be the, the main factor. Today, in 2019, we probably produce one third of the wool tops we produce in maybe 20 years ago. 90% of the wool we process in this mill is, is American wool. We import some wools from Australia, some wools that we, they are not produced here in the United States. But nowadays, our most important part of the business is into domestic wool and domestic customers. Most of the wool arrives in, in trucks coming from the western states. Usually during the season we are unloading three trucks a day of wool. Each truck would be, food truck would be 45,000 pounds of, of wool. When the wool arrives, we, well, we have a weight list, we check the weights, we check the, the quality, the, the bales, then the bales, with the, where we move the wool, we stack them in the, in the warehouse. Once the wool, we have it in the warehouse, which is a big part of our facility. The wool goes into processing, goes through a blending, mixing system, where we blend different wools from different places, origins, and to make the, the top we are trying to make, following some specs. From the blending area goes to the scouring line, where we scour the wool, removing the dirt and the wool grease. From there, after being scoured, the scoured wool is moved uh, by airflow to the cards where it's carded. Uh, mainly the cards remove pretty much the, the, the most of the vegetable matter and it turns the loose wool into a, a carded sliver. And from there on, the wool is already in a sliver form. It goes through three steps of uh, pin drafters. And then it goes through the combs. The combs is where we remove the, the short fibers, the noils, and it's the final cleaning of the, of the fiber. After that, after the combs, we, we move the, the combed wool to the finishing area with two more passes through pin rafters until we make the, we produce the final wool top, which is our end product.
and then from there we make the bale. It goes to the like back again to the finished goods warehouse, where the the tops in, in bales are loaded and shipped to to our customers. Lately, in the last few years, we have been working more and more with uh, brands and people that make not only yarn, but make finished goods, that more and more they want to have traceability of, of what they buy, and they want to get, get, be more involved in, in, the, in the wool. Same as Brooklyn Tweed, except the difference in Brooklyn Tweed is that we are working on, the, on, on a breed specification, breed of sheep, that is probably the, I think is the, the only company doing that with breed differentiation. More and more you have the customers of our customers wanting to know more about the supply chain. And even if we keep selling the spinning mills, they want to know where the wood is coming from. But we have more and more brands looking to to have a story behind their products and and that has been very helpful for the for the wool industry